Hello, my name is Amy Staub, and I've been a Heritage Show Hobby Preservationist Sheltie breeder since 2002. This is Daisy. In that time, I have personally cut about 34,000 different toenails, and I've taught all of my puppy buyers how to trim nails safely too. Today, I'm going to show you the secret. Most people are really apprehensive about the idea of trimming their dog's nails. And this comes down to two major misconceptions, which I'd like to address right away. First, a lot of people think that dog toenails are just as sensitive as our fingernail beds and our toenails. So if you've ever cut your toenails or fingernails short like I have and lived with pain for several days, um, trust me, it's not like that for the dogs. In fact, within a few minutes, the dogs seem to forget about it. We humans carry the guilt around with us a lot longer than the dogs seem to remember. So I just want to invite you now to just take a deep breath, forget all those times that you were worried about nail trimming. I'm going to show you a way that puts you in control so that you minimize the chance of quicking your dog's nail and that you know what to do when it does happen. Overall, the emotions and attitude that you bring into a nail trimming session are going to determine the dog's attitude about it. If you can stay calm and relaxed, even in the face of having quick to nail, your dog is going to remain calm and relaxed despite that momentary pain of having the nail quick too short. But if you come with some anxiety and you're fearful and you're shaking and you're nervous and you're gripping your dog really tight or your helper is gripping your dog really tight, then your dog is going to be really fighting to get those feet away from you and it just sets up this vicious cycle. So when the dog is fighting you, you're more likely to miss and get the nail too short. If you do quick a dog's nail, here's the secret. Grab a Kleenex and grab a whole bunch of little itty bitty cookies. You can cookie, cookie, cookie that dog and get its mind off of the fact that it's just had this nail clip too short. And in between, you can be managing any bleeding with the Kleenex. But then um, you need to grab your styptic powder, get a little bit on the tip of your fingertip, pack that into the nail that's bleeding, and it's going to clot much, much faster. Cookie, 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 and you keep calm. And the next nail you do, make sure you keep a feather light touch. The second misconception that gets people in trouble with nail trimming is that they think the dog's nails work the way that ours do. So when you look at your own nail, it's a thin little plate. You can see right through it and you can easily spot where the nail bed ends and where the dead nail begins. So people think that you can look at a white nail on a dog, you can kind of see through it and you can kind of see where that dead nail begins and they think, I'll just aim for that. That's the best way you're going to quick your dog's nail, so don't do that. In fact, I'm going to show you a totally different way to analyze what's happening inside the dog's nail and give you the control that you can stop in time before you reach that quick, no matter what color the dog's nails are. When a dog has short nails, the weight of their body is able to rest on the pads of their feet. But when the nails are too long, some of the weight of the dog's body actually rests on the nails and it forces the toe joint out of alignment and that disalignment moves on upwards through every bone in the dog's leg and eventually if enough time passes with long nails there are going to be consequences on your dog's joints and bones. Trimming nails every two weeks will prevent this from happening. The quick is a vein that grows through the center of the nail shaft. It ends approximately where you see the nail start to take a downward curve. Instead of trying to figure out how much to clip off your dog's nail by looking at the nail from the side, my method takes small slices so that you can analyze the cross section of the nail that's left. As you take slices from the tip of the nail moving toward the quick, you'll be able to see changes. Toward the end of the nail, you'll notice a lot of dead white flaky cross section, and that is the remnant of where the quick vein used to be. As you take slices, you can watch the nail structure change and you'll begin to be able to spot when you're getting close to the quick. I use a Miller's Forge plier style double bladed nail trimmers. These blades inside there are very sharp, 
which is wonderful. It makes the job of trimming through those nails much easier. It's actually more like slicing through butter when you have a new fresh pair of these. For trimming paw hair, I love these blunt nose. These are called ear and whisker scissors, but I use them on paws. These have a curved blade. You'll need some styptic powder. This is just quick stop inside. It's a powder, and what you do when you have a, a quick nail is you get a little powder on your fingertip, and then you just pack that onto the quick nail. It'll help it clot faster. I'm gonna trim Charlie tonight because he's got wonderful black nails. So you can see I've got him on, on a grooming table, and when you're alone, this is a good way to handle nail trims. I'm standing behind him with his paws away from me, and what this allows me to do is gently lean, not putting weight on him, but preventing him from getting this elbow underneath him, because that's the way he'll be able to get up. And you notice that I'm using a very feather-light touch on his paw. If I were to grip him with a fist of death, he would freak out. Even when you're moving your toe into place to separate from the pad, you should still have a feather-light touch. You don't need to fight with your dog. Just hang on if they're going to squirm. Don't freak them out. This is also a position you can use if you're comfortable sitting on the floor. You can have your dog between your legs. Another position, if you have a friend who can help you, is to have two chairs facing each other and one holds the dog like a teddy bear in their lap with all the nails facing the person that's going to do the clipping. If you do have a friend holding the dog, it's really important that everybody remains calm and no, no big heavy pressure is put onto the dog. <clears throat> Shelties are normally a very willing breed. You just have to have patience with them and understand that any tough grips on their paws are going to send them over the moon. All right, so here's the first nail. I'm just going to take a little tiny sliver. With that first slice we took off, what you can see in the cross section of this black nail is a lot of dead, white, flaky remnant from the, where the quick used to be. So when you see dead white nail like this, it means you're not close, not even close to the quick. I'm just going to take off another little sliver. Okay. And what you're seeing here in the middle is a fantastic view of where you should stop. In the very center of the nail, there's a moist looking gray blob. And that is the nail, how the nail looks when you're approaching the quick. I'm very happy with how that nail turned out. Here we go. I'm going to do this white nail. And in the middle here, you can see a white dot, white flaky cross section, so that means we're not close. So here's after the second cross section I took. And I can still see a white dot in the middle and no sign of the quick. So I'm going to take another. So in the middle here of this white nail, we now have a moist looking cross section. It's pinkish gray, and that tells me that I'm close to the quick and it's time to stop. I've just taken the first slice off of this nail. It's a black nail, and I see a clear white dot. So I take another little slice. In the center, there is moist gray nail close to the quick. I took off a bigger slice that nail and I see a lot of white dead. Still, I didn't get much that time. Okay, let's take a look. You could take off maybe another small slice based on how much white I see, but we're awfully close. so. I'm going to stop. I'm going to be conservative and stop. This is a situation where if you kept going, you might be able to get off another small slice, but you risk quicking him. So now I want to show you how to trim hair. His underpaw has a lot of hair on it. If you really take your fingers and pull out from the pads, you can see that some hair appears really, really long as if it's been folded in there and growing. We've got hair in between. Look how long that is coming. Can you see this tuft? Coming from in between the toes. 
So you really have to make sure that you trim the hair so that the dog has good traction. I'm going to make sure that the curve of my shears matches the curve of his paw. Just seems to work out better that way. I would not recommend putting, nestling these blades in between the pads. You just want to clip off the hair that is growing out beyond the pads. So everything is down to the pad level. Go in there and pull out some of that hair in between the pads every so often. Make sure you don't have any hair laying down, avoiding getting cut. Naturally, when you shorten the length of the nails, you want to shorten the length of the hair by the same amount. So trim the nails first, and then just do a little nip at the very top. If you've got a very hairy dog, then you'll have to do trimming around the perimeter. And then the last thing I do is I pull out the spikes. You can do this with your fingers, you can do it with a brush, but you want to make sure that all of that long hair that's just growing in between the toes gets pulled up. Now, I'm not cutting any of the hair that is supposed to be on top of the pad. I'm only cutting the hair that I pulled up from between the pad. So if you do that, then you're going to wind up with a paw that looks nice, trim, natural, like no scissors ever touched it. It's magic, huh? This is Daisy. She has a different nail style from Charlie. It's a thicker nail, they're all white, and she grows copious amounts of fur all around her paw, out of her foot, in between her pads. She's just got some really hairy feet. The method is the same. You start with a tiny slice, and then you check. The bright white is what you're looking for. That's dead flaky nail in the middle, bright white. Here's a great example of a bright white dot in the middle of a white nail, so you keep going. Do not look from the side to eyeball how much to cut off. You will be wrong and you'll quit your dog. You keep going. Like I said, Daisy grows her nails a little faster than Charlie does, so I'll probably have to take off more length from her. All right, look at that, right in the middle, great section of moist, pink, cute, adorable vein. So we are going to stop there. That's the correct length. That was like six slices or something like that. Let's do the next one. Okay, bright white flaky nail. Bright white flaky nail. That was a mini little section. Okay, we are going to take one more slice. This is a case where you can see in the middle that darker area is the start of the quick, but there's so much bright white. I'm going to take one more slice. Hmm, I still see a lot of white, bright white. Okay, I'm going to take another slice. There's just so much bright white left. I don't think we're quite to the quick yet. Aha! There we go. I'm happy with that. Okay. Daisy. Um, I'm take another slice there. Daisy's kind of telling me we're a little close. Okay, so she pulled her paw just as I pulled that last slice. And look at that, she was right. That's the last slice I should take. Look at that beautiful side of the quick. So just because she pulled her paw away does not mean I'm going to increase the pressure of my grip. 
still staying with feather light hands. got four quicks showing. That's beautiful. Okay, so Daisy has a lot of hair underneath. So again, you're just going to want to just check the paw with your fingers. If you're very comfortable with the scissors, you can also kind of just lift out the hair. But you just kind of want to explore. If there's mud clots or something between the toes, you want to finger remove those if possible, otherwise you'll have to maybe clip them out. So you just, you know, trim the hair to the level of the pad. Now see here on Daisy, you can see we've got a lot of length of hair beyond the new length of nail. So I'm just going to go straight across like that. I love it when you look at the top of a dog's paw and there's enough hair to graciously cover the nail. She has so much hair that if I don't kind of pull some of this to the side, it's going to end up looking really, really unkempt very quickly. I'm going to pull some of this hair in between the toes down and trim it to the level of the pad. Change the angle of my scissors to make sure I'm really getting everywhere I need to get. Now the last step on Daisy is to pull all of this super thick hair from in between her toes. My goal is not to clip any of the hair that, that is growing on top of her pat paws, just to, trip, just to trim the hair that I pulled up from between the pads. So when it smooths back down, it goes back inside the foot and everything on top lays flat. So here I'm going to show you the same type of trim but on a rear foot. Now the, the only thing that's different with routine nail trimming and paw trimming with the back feet is that you have feathers on the back of the hock. So we love those. We don't trim those to the bone. <laughs> no, no, no. What we do is we, we brush them out straight. And this is the one place on a Sheltie where you, you, you don't have to use a thinning shears or anything. You can just take a straight shears or your little curved blade. To, still, it's not a thinning shear. And you're just going to cut a straight line. Now, I am not cutting off much length, but I want to choose the longest length I can where every hair is going to be that same length. Now, when the dog's up and moving around, it's not going to look like you cut them with a straight blade. It's going to move around and just be thick and glorious, almost like the dog's wearing boots back there. Love it. Yummy. You can do it too.